Good morning. It is Tuesday, July the 30th. Let me get my Radar Omega sweep turned off here so you don't have to listen to that through the whole video. It is Tuesday, July the 30th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. Here's your Alabama WX weather briefing video. It's going to be heating up in coming days. All this rain we've had recently. We're going to wish Mother Nature had held on to a little bit of it as we get deeper into August and uh, hopefully... Uh, we'll continue to get uh, enough rain to keep the uh, keep chasing the drought away. Here's the upper pattern across North America off the GFS, the 18Z run from yesterday. Recording this just after midnight, early on this Tuesday morning. And you can see a ridge of high pressure there uh, over the uh, sort of the Arklatex. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi centered right there uh, over eastern Texas. Uh, as we take uh, this map in motion, uh, you can see this northwesterly flow uh, over Alabama and areas to our northwest. That's going to play a bit of a role in the potential for thunderstorms today uh, and perhaps again on Wednesday uh, as that northwesterly flow. You always know what that means. But you can see as we go through time, the upper level high pressure system is uh, increasing and expanding. And we do have... Um, a short wave trough there by Wednesday night moving through uh, or out of the northern plains and into the Midwest. Uh, this little system has sort of lost its way, uh, but you can see it's going to have an impact as it gets into the Great Lakes. It'll even have an impact here in Alabama, increasing our rain chances a bit, uh, a bit by Thursday, more by Friday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday the ridge sort of consolidates to the west and intensifies that system uh, slowly moves through the Great Lakes it is summer nothing moves very quickly uh, you see the subtropical ridge to our east uh, pumping up moisture but uh, the heights have definitely fallen here by Friday night and uh, that means increasing chances of, uh, of rain and thunderstorms not uh, not widespread or numerous but they're going to be uh, certainly higher than they're going to have been during the uh, midweek period system in the way in the eastern Pacific uh, that'll become uh, a hurricane uh, not a major hurricane I don't think but um, you know we'll be watching it very closely uh, out there the Atlantic continues to be quiet uh, hurricane center tracking disturbance is going to move near the Bahamas uh, over the next couple of days and we'll we'll take a peek at that in just a minute but um, there's not good model consensus on what it hap what happens with it going to the week two period here uh, broad stretched out ridge across the southern United States uh, weakness begins to develop toward the end of the period here Friday the 9th over the Pacific Northwest got a system moving through southern Canada um, but the uh, ridge is intensifying ah wait a minute something interesting got a little low pressure system here by Saturday the 10th, that's uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, and that system looks really wet. Does it look tropical? No. Does it have much wind with it? No. Um, so it could be a subtropical system, could be just uh, an extra tropical low, but um, it looks pretty wet. And, uh, you know, it. you never, you just don't trust anything. Uh, Close-in systems like this even, uh, you know, uh, near the coast, uh, the waters are extremely warm. You just never know what could happen. We'll watch it. Um, don't see anything now. The GFS not excited about it. You see it gets into um, southern Mississippi and Louisiana, and it sort of intensifies. Uh, now, this is the upper system, of course, uh, but that could spell some very wet weather. You see the subtropical ridge kind of uh, flexing its muscle uh, a little bit to the west. I had mentioned that northwesterly flow. The Storm Prediction Center uh, on the day two here, uh, as I'm recording this, just about 12:30. Uh, this, you know, will in effect be the day one later today. It'll, you know, it certainly won't be exactly where this is, but you know, this northwesterly flow is going to spit some thunderstorms this way. Some of those could clip northeast Alabama. The SPC has the northeastern quarter of Alabama in a marginal risk. That's a level one out of five. We've got a slight risk back from western Kentucky into eastern Iowa. That's our level two out of five. Same thing over the Dakotas. Uh, as we go into Wednesday, this is the uh, Monday day three. Uh, which uh, has a little bullseye there over southwestern Minnesota. 
uh, northwestern Iowa and eastern South Dakota. Alabama just has a general thunderstorm outlook. The marginal risk it st extends from that slight risk there in the Midwest all the way through the Ohio Valley. Now, of course, we're interested in uh, you know what we can expect: showers and thunderstorms. This is the H triple R uh, at 8 a.m. Uh, today on Tuesday, showing showers and thunderstorms uh, prevalent and widespread there over eastern Tennessee. But they're going to be diving into the Asheville area. A little bit of trailing, um, you know, trailing boundary along that. Uh, could trigger a few showers in North Georgia. Those could reach into northeast Alabama, parts of DeKalb, uh, Cherokee counties, maybe reaching Etowah County here as we get into the mid-morning hours. But um, you, you can tell the coverage just not going to be that extensive. A couple showers popping up over the northeastern part of the state during the afternoon. A couple more developing uh, toward the uh, late afternoon into the evening hours, but still not much. System there in western Kentucky uh, diving through the Nashville area, uh, pushing down into eastern Tennessee. This energy uh, could trigger uh, a few showers and thunderstorms late this evening. As you can see here, uh, Tennessee Valley areas there, Huntsville, Decatur, uh, just back across the border in Tennessee, could see a shower or a thunderstorm as we approach the midnight hour, but that activity continues to weaken as we go through the evening and the overnight. Some showers, storms could, uh, you know, could skim along the Alabama-Georgia border uh, during the early morning hours on Wednesday, and you see that northwesterly flow continuing. Favored area is going to be right there along the Alabama-Georgia state line, again uh, over northeast Alabama near Jackson County. Uh, looks like a little flare up there during the afternoon hours on Wednesday. And then most of the activity sort of pushes into uh, South Alabama. Now, the big story for today, uh, and again for Wednesday, is going to be the excessive heat. Heat advisories are in effect uh, for the Tennessee Valley, West Central Alabama, a good bit of Central Alabama, South Central sections down into the southwestern part of the state covered by the National Weather Service in Mobile. These are heat index values off the National Digital Forecast Database. Um, this combines the effects of temperature and humidity and um, you know, gives us some idea of the impact on the human body. Heat index value is going to be approaching 105 uh, 3, 4 o'clock today over central Alabama, some areas of south Alabama as well. Look at these values back over um, northern Mississippi, western Tennessee, 110, 111. Got some uh, 112s in southern Iowa. This is really dangerous heat. Excessive heat warnings will be in effect in these areas. We're going to be under heat advisories till about 7 to 9 o'clock tonight, depending on whether you're in the Tennessee Valley or the rest of central Alabama. And I think we'll deal with them again tomorrow. Uh, by the time you watch this video, they may have already been issued. They'll certainly be issued during the day. Because if we uh, sort of jet forward into Wednesday, this is 21Z. You can see those heat index values are even a degree or two hotter. Um, and so this is going to get some dangerous conditions. Uh, across central Alabama. You'll want to remember your, you know, your typical heat safety rules. Of course, we want to take frequent breaks for outside working or playing or just hanging out, you know, air conditioned areas, you know, fairly common sense, but we want to want you to think about these things. You know, light, appropriate clothing, loose, you know, very ventilated. You want to you want to be very comfortable. You want to make sure you have a hat. Uh, sunscreen is uh, important. Those UV index values are very, very high, and you're going to want to stay hydrated. Uh, that is extremely important. You know, when you see heat index values approaching 105, 110, heat uh, illness is definitely a concern, and um, we don't want that to happen. Remember to check on your vulnerable friends, neighbors, family members, um, and also check on those pets to make sure they have plenty of water and uh, and shade in a place to cool off. Now let's get into the day-by-day uh, -day model runs. This is the GFS. Starting off on this Tuesday, fairly clear during the morning hours. You see as we go through the afternoon, not much at all, if any, in the way of showers and thunderstorms. The HRRR kind of telling us that same story. The rain chances today very, 
very low. High temperatures are going to be rising into the middle 90s in most areas, 94 to 96 degrees. Heat index value is going to be approaching 105 to 107. Some areas maybe even 109. We go through Wednesday. A few showers and thunderstorms pop up over south Alabama. Most of central north Alabama stays dry. It'll be even hotter, a degree or two hotter. Uh, heat index values maybe even a degree or two warmer and uh, that's going to be because those dew points are going to be 74, 75 today, 75, 76 tomorrow. Uh, so it's going to be extremely muggy as we get into Thursday. Showers and thunderstorms are very isolated. They're mostly concentrated over the southern half of the state. They could continue into the evening hours. That trough, remember, moving into the Great Lakes, sort of sending this boundary down into our area. And that, of course, becomes a focus for the development of showers and thunderstorms. By Friday, um, you know, most of the rain activity is in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, beaches, Alabama, and northwest Florida. Most of uh, our areas are going to be dry. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible on Friday, Friday afternoon, into Friday evening. Saturday, uh, getting into the main heating of the day, uh, that boundary is lying over south Alabama, curls back into Mississippi, where showers and thunderstorms may be a little more widespread. But in Alabama, they're going to be generally confined to the southern half of uh, the state get into sunday sunday looks you know pretty dry until we get into the uh, late afternoon heating you get those convective temperatures going uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms will develop uh, into the voodoo period now week two um, you see uh, you know again scattered afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms it's a rinse and repeat forecast as we go through tuesday wednesday you can see those showers and thunderstorms may be a little less likely, uh, but they'll be there. Now, here's our system. Uh, you know, it really starts to kind of show up just as a, a big area of disturbed weather over Florida uh, toward Thursday, you know, the, the 8th, Friday the 9th, moving slowly to the west-northwest, uh, maybe just staying offshore. This probably keeps it from becoming tropical. You know, if it takes a little further track to the south, that could be a different story. Uh, it's not going to become anything major in here, but it could become, you know, a decent little tropical cyclone. We'll watch that very closely. You see, it uh, drifts into the Alabama, Mississippi, southeast Louisiana coastal area. And taking its time, you see it's got a good cyclonic flow. Um, it's going to bring some very heavy rainfall amounts. Uh, to those areas. This is going to be helped by this subtropical ridge. You can see it's, uh, as we said earlier, flexing its muscle back to the west. And, um, you know, that means lots of heat and humidity for Alabama and the south. Now, this is the GFS ensembles, the uh, tropical cyclone probabilities. I'm, uh, you know, tuning in to the probability of a tropical depression across the entire model run goes all the way out to Thursday the 8th and you can see the GFS says nada zilch nothing in the Gulf of Mexico the Caribbean or the Atlantic Basin it does see that system in the Eastern Pacific and says yep that's a hundred percent chance um, I, you know we can buy that let's go over here though and look at the European um, you know what does the European say over the full run same time period um, you know, sees the Eastern Pacific system, has, has been, you know, kind of, you know, recently painting this Western Caribbean possibility, Southwestern Caribbean, and I don't put a lot of credence in that. This is the system the Hurricane Center has on its radar. You see it gets into the Bahamas, um, you know, comes across the Virgin Islands, Lesser Antilles, Greater Antilles, into the Bahamas, and, uh, you know, then the hurricane or the uh, GFS ensembles give it about a 70 to 80 percent chance of becoming a tropical depression. What's the chance it becomes a tropical storm? Well, somewhere in the 20 to 30 percent category till it gets around the Outer Banks. Uh, the deterministic model has it missing the Outer Banks going on off to the northeast. Could be a problem for our friends in Nova Scotia. You know, what are the full run hurricane probability? Hurricane probability is nothing uh, off of that. The the uh, gem, the Canadian, is sort of off of its kick that we were going to have this same system get into the eastern gulf and come up, uh, you know, into the north central gulf. 
so that doesn't look like it's you know as viable of a, of a possibility as if we ever thought it was you know um you know who knows uh, kind of what goes you know with that now i got some other stuff i got to show you and i kind of closed out some of this so i'm going to move back first i'm going to give you the national blend of models daily high temperatures um actually been updated 94 today uh, 95 tomorrow and and thursday 96 on friday these are sort of average picking birmingham as the as sort of the center point temperatures fall back a little bit into the week into the weekend as we get into some increased shower and thunderstorm chances but you can see we're going to be right here just a couple of degrees above normal uh, for the next several days now we're going to be well above normal at night and that's part of the problem of the heat advisory you know we need that time to recover and when overnight lows only drop into the upper 70s that doesn't give us much of an opportunity to do that you know our average low this time of year would be um, 91 or 71 and um, I think that's right 71 or 72 I'd have to go look at the ACES but somewhere in the lower 70s you can see we're going to be slightly uh, above normal uh, throughout this period now we'll go over here uh, well we need the GFS uh, ensembles um, so we're going to go right here and we're going to pick the, uh, the the spread QPF plume uh, the mean you know reasonably is in the one and a half range one and a half inch range uh the you know the primary you know box and whisker plot of the of the members is generally in this you know three quarters of an inch to two inch range our control is off the charts um something to watch you know there are a lot of members that are up in the you know three four five inch range so you know hey could it happen eh you know, stranger things have occurred. We've certainly been wet uh, here lately. I know a lot of you know Jen Nairmore, a friend from Weatherbrain. She joined the blog today and uh, going to be helping us with some uh, Alabama weather updates uh, here, uh, you know, in the, in the future. So we're very glad to have Jen on the team. Welcome, Jen. We appreciate you and uh, looking forward to your um, excellent input uh, on Alabama WX, our beloved weather blog and uh mentioning weather brains uh if you haven't already gone out and checked this week's show dr sam lilo joined us uh i wasn't there james said it was a great show though uh, dropped on monday night get it wherever you get your podcast or you can go to uh, weatherbrains.com or our youtube channel which is youtube.com forward slash weather brains well that's your weather briefing video for this tuesday july the 30th we'll be uh, checking out the possibilities we might get in the top 10 on that rainfall for july looks unlikely now we'll be uh, checking the almanac checking the radar updating the forecast doing the things we do right here on alabama wx for you we'll probably have an update written update about three o'clock of course any updates through the day as things change as we get new uh, heat advisories changes to heat advisories you know any kind of uh, excessive uh, heat alerts that we need to alert you about you'll know about them here and as you go through your day as i always tell you like i do myself keep an eye to the sky because there's always going to be something fun to look at